Welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners. This one is part 54, which is the best method to make this component. Is there a right way or a wrong way to do it? And what is this component? It is a removable drain adapter for a steam plant that I'm building. On the steam plant there is a small drainage sump. This in turn needs to be drained into a receptacle somewhere on the floor. This image explains it clearly. There is a pipe that goes from the outside edge of the board into the sump. And this part that I'm making allows the fitting of a piece of silicone rubber pipe. The fitting starts off life as a piece of hexagon brass bar which is now in the chuck of my small walko lathe. Generally speaking I set my micrometer first using a twist drill. Then I check the numbers on the side and make any adjustments. Why do I do it this way? Well it's just quicker. This twist drill is 930 seconds of an inch in diameter and it is tapping size for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. I'm running the lathe slowly so that the chippings don't fly all over the place. It's not so important in the main workshop but this is part of my house. And I don't want any chippings to stick in my feet if I walk barefoot on the carpet. To be honest though I hardly ever walk around the house with bare feet. I do like the speed controller on the Walko lathe. It's very easy to use and it gives me infinite speed control. I'm turning this at 250 RPM. It appears much faster than this when you watch the video because that is running at a high speed. And the idea of this is to help prevent anyone from slipping into a coma. I faced across the front of the piece of brass and I've just noticed that my tool is not exactly on centre height. I will put that right in due course. Some viewers may be wondering why I turned this part much longer than I needed it. I applied the parting tool intending to cut some grooves like some other fittings I've made for this plant. I'm making this part differently. Not necessarily the best way to make the part but it will show you the options. After centre drilling this piece of bar I used a twist drill to go down the centre part and already I've committed a cardinal sin. I've removed the part from the chuck and when I put it back in it isn't running true. What I'm doing here is just turning some of the hexagon away so that it fits where I want it to fit. Now I need to turn the part of this bar where the silicone rubber tubing is going to fit. But I'm not going to risk holding it by the part I've just turned. The chuck is gripping it by the hexagon part. The first part of this job involves using a parting tool in a very cheap tool post and to make matters worse on purpose the parting tool sticks out a lot further than it should do. Not only am I making a model engineering for beginners video I'm also testing the durability of this incredibly cheap tool post and so far I really can't fault it. Eventually the piece of brass falls down into the chip tray, leaving a bit of a pip on the end of it. Here's the story so far. I've really made this part back to front. I would normally turn the part where the silicone rubber tube fits first and then work from there, but I'm doing it in reverse order. And also I keep taking the part out of the chuck, but I'm only doing this for the video. Now it's time to centre drill the end so I can drill a smaller hole all the way through the part. In this video the part is in and out of the chuck and this is completely wrong and utterly bad practice. If you machine a piece of bar, whether it be hexagon or round bar, the machine part is perfectly accurate and very concentric, but once you remove the part from the chuck and put it back in, this is not the case. It will normally run out of true. This one's not too bad, so I'm carrying on by threading it using a tailstock die holder. And because of the infinite speed drive, I'm doing it under power. And I even put the lathe into reverse to withdraw the tailstock die holder from the thread. I'm using a file to clean up the end. And while I'm doing this, I'd like to say hello to Jade and Bob, who are friends of my daughters. Apparently, Bob watches my videos a lot of the time. At this point I should say I think he needs to get out more, but no, please watch my videos, you will find them useful at some time in your life. Here I'm trying the part in position in the way of a test fit and it's perfect. Although it's not much good as it is and I've backed myself into a bit of a corner, 
I drilled and threaded the piece of brass hexagon that I parted off, 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. In the usual way, using a centre drill first, and then a twist drill, which is tapping size for 5 sixteenths by 32. The twist drill is 7 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. And then, using a 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch taper tap, taken from my box of 5 sixteenths by 32 taps and dies, I thread the piece of brass hexagon bar in the chuck all the way through using this tap. This is a brand new tap and it cuts much better than some of the other taps that I have that are very old. I'm not doing this at all by hand, the lathe is running first in forward and then in reverse to remove the tap. Now at this point I am not going to remove the piece of brass hexagon from the chuck, because at the moment that threaded hole down the centre of the piece of brass is perfectly concentric. I screw the threaded part that I'm about to machine into the piece of bar that's in the chuck and I use my barcode spanner to tighten it, then I simply turn it to the diameter I require it to be, which is a quarter of an inch. The micrometer actually sits on the work without any support, so I think we can assume that is an accurate quarter of an inch, almost an interference fit in the micrometer. The end of this part must not be sharp, otherwise it would cut the silicone rubber tube. I turn it freehand, followed by filing and using some wet or dry sandpaper to smooth it out. Then I slightly centre drill the end, followed by drilling all the way through with a twist drill. It's important to make sure that the twist drill isn't too big, otherwise the part will become weak. All I need to do now is unspanner the part from the piece of brass that's in the chuck, which in itself will be quite useful to chop up for some 5 sixteenths by 32 nuts. All I need to do now is fit an o-ring to this component because it doesn't need to be tightened up into this hole just sufficiently to seal it. I screw it into the hole with finger pressure only and fit a piece of silicone rubber tubing. When the engine is in steam any oil or water that collects in the sump will drain away via this fitting. And that is it, possibly the wrong way to make the part, but at the end of the day, if it works for you and it works for me, then I'm sure it's okay. I finished this video how it started, with the part just sat in the sump. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.